chemistry lecture number 12, law of conservation of mass. Why does a lump of coal burn? And why, after burning, are the ashes lighter than the original lump of coal? The explanation depends on what you believe matter is made of. Now, Aristotle, way back in the day, said that matter was made of earth, air, fire, and water. And thus, a lump of coal is made of these four components. A lump of coal burns because it is releasing the fire that's inside of it. Aristotle's ideas of matter lasted through the late 18th century. And George Ernst Stahl, who lived into the 18th century, also believed that fire was a component of all matter that was combustible. So he called this component phlogiston, from the Greek word for inflammable. Uh, by the way, flammable and inflammable mean the same thing, capable of burning. But anyway, anything that burns has phlogiston inside of it. When a lump of coal burns, the phlogiston leaves the coal, and what's left is an ash that is lighter than the coal. When a material loses phlogiston, it loses mass. So this is why ash is lighter than the coal. So if you started out with, say, 50 grams of coal, and then the coal burned, the flames coming out of it is the phlogiston coming out of it, and since the phlogiston went out of it, the remaining ash is lighter than the uh, coal that you started with. The phlogiston concept of matter explained why matter loses mass after burning, so that's why it was used. Now, unfortunately, it couldn't explain why substances gained mass after burning. For example, it was known that phosphorus gained mass after being burned. Uh, I think phosphorus was found in somewhere in the mid-1600s. I'm not sure. Um, but they knew about phosphorus, and they knew that uh, if you lit it on fire, uh, it would burn. And then after it burned, it would leave behind this white uh, residue. But when they weighed this uh, white residue, uh, it always weighed more than what the uh, material started with. Now, the phlogistonists explained this gain in mass after burning uh, by saying that the phlogiston could have negative weight. When you subtract a negative, you get a positive. So, if you remove a negative mass, you end up gaining mass. So, the explanation they had is that, say, here's, here's phosphorus, and it's got some negative mass, or maybe negative phlogiston in it. When you burned it, this negative mass went out. So, the negative was removed. So, let's say negative 160 grams of mass were removed. Well, if you remove a negative or subtract a negative, it's the same as adding a positive. So, instead of 124 grams minus 160, since you're subtracting a negative mass, you really adding a positive, uh, 124 plus 160 is 284 grams. So that's the explanation they gave for why phosphorus gained weight. Uh, it was losing negative mass. Uh, but what the heck is negative mass? And how do you know when phlogiston will have a positive or a negative mass? Now, according to the phlogistonists, when you see flames coming out of burning coal, that's positive phlogiston. But when you see flames coming out of burning phosphorus, oh, that's negative phlogiston. Negative phlogiston was also used to explain why iron gains mass when it rusts. You know, you put a iron nail outside for a few days and then you come back and it's covered with this uh, red uh, powder and it weighs more. Um, phlogiston of negative mass inside the iron was being freed by the iron resulting in a substance, rust, which now had greater mass. So let's say you had 23 grams of iron with some negative uh, phlogiston in it and then you remove the negative phlogiston, let's say negative 96 grams of uh, uh, phlogiston were removed. Well, you removed a negative mass, so that's the same as adding a mass, and that's how um, iron gains mass when it rusts. It's because negative mass was removed, whatever that means. And it was believed that phlogiston did not respond to gravity and therefore had no mass, so the flames have no mass. Um, yet when phlogiston entered or left a material, it can make mass appear or disappear. So when negative phlogiston left an object, the object was heavier, mass had suddenly popped in from nowhere. Matter was created from nothing. But if a lump of coal burned and became lighter, it was because the phlogiston had left the coal. Mass had suddenly disappeared or was being destroyed. Remember, the phlogiston itself is supposed to be uh, without mass. If mass is being created from nothing and then disappearing or being destroyed, then mass is not being conserved in a chemical reaction. Right? It's popping it out of nowhere. Uh, it's being created from nothing. It's disappearing into nothing. Um, it's being destroyed. 
Well, along comes a scientist by the name of Antoine Laurent Lavoisier uh, in the late 18th century, and he began doing experiments to discredit the idea of phlogiston. Lavoisier showed that when materials gained or lost mass, it was because the mass was transferred from one material to another. In one experiment, he heated a mixture of water and iron filings to a high temperature, and the procedure caused the iron to rust and a gas was also produced. The mass of uh, water and iron before the procedure mass matched the uh, mass of the uh, rust and gas produced after the procedure. So he took some iron and he heated the uh, iron up and then he uh, blew some uh, steam over it. And let's say the mass of steam or water is 108 grams and the amount of iron you started with was 223 grams. After you did this procedure, he ended up with uh, 319 grams of rust. And uh, also some gas was produced in the reaction. He was able to capture the gas and weigh that. Well, the total mass of what you started with, 223 grams of iron and 108 grams of water, and then after the reaction, 319 grams of rust and 12 grams of hydrogen gas, they all add up to 331. So you started with 331 grams of mass and ended with 300, 331 grams of mass. And Lavoisier was able to demonstrate that what had actually happened was that... Um, the oxygen in the water combined with the iron to give something heavier. And then the hydrogen part of the water uh, came off as hydrogen gas. So the loss of uh, mass in the water, because it started out with 108 grams of water and it turned into 12 grams of hydrogen gas, well that was made up for by the gain in mass of the iron. So the uh, iron gained the oxygen that was lost by the water. So matter was just being transferred from the uh, water to the iron. Now this demonstrated that when new materials are made, matter is simply transferred from one material to another. Matter was not being created from nothing or being destroyed. It was conserved. So this leads to the law of conservation of matter. In a chemical reaction, matter is neither created nor destroyed. Matter is conserved. So let's try a problem. 10 grams of red mercury oxide powder is placed in an open flask and heated until it is converted to liquid mercury and oxygen gas. The liquid mercury has a mass of 9.26 grams. What is the mass of oxygen formed of the reaction? Okay, so red mercury oxide powder is heated. So here's a picture of some uh, red mercury oxide powder. So yeah, red uh, mercury, uh, yeah, mercury oxide has a red appearance, and in this picture it's in a test tube, and uh, the test tube is being heated. So if you heat uh, mercury oxide, this red powder, it turns into liquid mercury. And that's what a uh, picture of liquid mercury is, and it also gives off oxygen gas. So, let's see if we can solve this problem. We have to write out what we start with. We started out with red mercury oxide powder, so I'm just going to write mercury oxide. So we started out with mercury oxide. And we heated it. So we're adding heat. And then after the reaction, we ended up with liquid mercury. So we just ended up with regular mercury, the silvery stuff. So we started with some red stuff. We ended up with the silvery stuff here. And. oxygen gas. And we started out with 10 grams of mercury oxide. And then the amount of mercury uh, left over after heating was 9.26 grams. And they're asking what is the mass of oxygen? See, we don't know how much oxygen we ended up with. Well, according to the law of conservation of mass, the mass of what you started with has to equal the mass of what you end up with. So if we started with 10 grams of something, before the reaction and then after the reaction we have 9.26 grams of something else and oxygen gas. The amount of oxygen added to the amount of mercury has to equal 10. So the amount of oxygen then is just going to be 10 minus 9.26 and so you're going to end up with 0.74 uh, grams of oxygen. All right. So we were able to figure this out because we know the law of conservation of mass. What you start with has to equal what you end up with. All right. 
For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 12, Law of Conservation of Mass.